In this tutorial, we're going to be looking at how to create a obstacle which will um, have a ball bouncing off. So I'm going to execute the program to show you what it looks like. So you see I've got a square in the middle, and my ball is bouncing as it was before in previous tutorials, but now it's actually bouncing off this side of the wall. So we've already looked at how to use rectangles to make the ball move. Um, so this is now... Uh, you can think of it as a rectangle. So the idea is that there's a kind of boundary box around the ball and when that rectangle collides with the other rectangle we want to do the bounce logic. So let's actually have a look to see how this works. Now first of all I've created a new ob uh, obstacle uh, and that's a rectangle. I see I've created it in the same way as I created the ball. If I scroll down to where the ball is drawing you can see I draw the ball and then underneath it, I actually draw the rectangle as well. Now, the next part is understanding the collision detection. The collision detection is very similar to the collision detection we used on the board check. Um, however, it's got a few key differences which I want to draw your attention to. Now, first of all, um, we want to first uh, make sure that there has been a collision with the rectangle. A rectangle have a very useful function called collide rect, where you can test if one rectangle has collided with another. So ball dot collide rect um, is saying if the ball has collided with whatever you've passed through, in this case the obstacle, then we want to do something about it. So here I've got ball dot center x is less than or equal to obstacle x. Now notice I'm using center x rather than x. So what is center x? Well, it's quite straightforward. Um, this is the center uh, coordinates of the rectangle. So rather than the top left, which is what we normally use, this is actually right bang in the center. There is a reason why we're doing this, uh, and that's because if we just simply got rid of the centers and left it with X and Y, you'll see some odd behavior, which I'll explain as the program is running. So as you can see, it seems to be bouncing fine, you know, it's, it's hitting the thing. But every now and then, you see that bounce worked fine, but every now and then you'll see a glitch. So hopefully we'll see the glitch now, and see it went straight through it. It did bounce, but it went through it as well. And there it goes again. So that's very odd behaviour, and for a novice programme it'd be quite hard to understand what's happening. But let's actually look at the logic. dy is changed by 4 each time. So the point it's colliding, um, dy has actually moved inside the rectangle at that point by 4 pixels. It's not much, but it's enough to make this inequality not be true anymore. So if we think about it, ball.y is uh, less than or equal to obstacle y. So that's basically checking the, um, the top. This one here is checking the bottom. So the bottom one is what glitched. So it's saying if the y position of the ball is greater or equal to obstacle.y plus 100. So that's the bottom um, of the obstacle. If we've actually slightly moved inside the square by the time the collision has been detected, um, that equality is no longer true because y is not going to be greater than that. So it's although it's checking to see if it's on the bottom side of the um, uh, obstacle doesn't actually realise it's inside it. And the easiest way to fix that is to use a centre because the ball will never move a full, um, full half of ball in. Okay, it's a bit hard to explain, but the ball is um, 40 pixels. If we half that, that's 20 pixels. Now as long as dy never gets bigger than 20, then that's actually much safer to use because even if it does move in slightly, the centre of that is still going to be greater than the bottom. So we have to use centre when doing collision detection on an obstacle like this just because there's that outside chance we might start to move in. Now this might not happen every time, um, but if certain situations and certain balances you'll get that odd behaviour. So it's just a bit safer to use the centre rather than simple. You don't use the centre for the obstacle because we're still trying to check the side of the obstacle. Um, it's the ball that potentially can move into the obstacle, not the other way around. Okay, so you still use X and Y 
one of those. And that's it. Um, this is actually um, basic collision detection for any kind of um, sprite object. doesn't really matter what it is. As long as it can be bounded by a, re a rectangle, we can use this code to check collisions.